Well, welcome again, everybody. Welcome to part eight of Bullying Prevention, Miss Truths and What to Do. We're going to talk about what to do today. I want to welcome Senior Master Laura Sanborn. Thank you for being here, ma'am. Thank you, sir. We missed you at our last couple of them. And we're going to talk about what to do when your kid's being bullied or what to do ahead of time in case your kid's getting bullied. And we're going to really focus on some topics that are going to help your kid ahead of time before they get bullied. So we've talked a lot about what to do if your kid's being bullied and how to work with schools and what to do if your kid's being bullied and what to do and how to help your kid. And we've covered that in great detail in other parts of our podcast and other parts of our book. But now we're going to talk to do what to do. Uh, we're going to talk about what to do ahead of time and how to be pro active. And what we've talked about before is that there's a lot of school-based programs. My favorite is the Obeus Bullying Prevention Program. Uh, that's a fantastic program. It has the best results of any school-based bullying prevention program. But there's also some other wonderful programs that we uh, have covered that work really well. And we've talked about some other programs that really don't have any basis in uh, research, don't have any evidence basis for, uh, for results in bullying prevention. So we've, we really want your schools to have some uh, a program that works. And that's something that you may or may not be able to control as a parent. What we do know you can control is what you do with your kids. So we're gonna go over this in a couple different ways. We'll talk about first, what we know is the number one most effective program. So let's talk about it. And of course, uh, everybody that's been reading about us and, and hearing us talk in the podcast knows we're martial artists and it may feel like we're biased. And when we started this, uh, this project that we're gonna talk about in a little bit, we had this idea that does martial arts help kids with bullying prevention and does it help kids with really two things? Number one question we were asking is, does it help kids keep from getting bullied? And we think, or we thought that it did. We thought, you know, this probably helps them mostly not, you know, not because they would you know, protect themselves in a fight or, or get in fights all the time and then show that they're the strongest kid on the block, but mostly because we felt like it would build enough confidence so they wouldn't be in the bully, the bully group, that they wouldn't be in the group that would be targeted for bullying, that they'd build enough confidence so they could stand up for themselves and so on. So there'd be a lot of characteristics that martial arts would help them with that would keep them from being bullied. Number two is that we wanted to see if this would prevent them from bullying other kids. And so we're going to go over the research and what we found in martial arts and the in pretty extensive research that we were able to do and what the results were. So let's get to it. I'm going to share a different screen. And this came directly from uh, some research that we did uh, with Arizona State University and it was in my doctoral program. So let's get to that. Master Samworn was part of it and many schools across the country were, uh, I'm really proud to say that they were part of the, uh, part of the program and part of our uh, process when we, when we built this. And I'm gonna skip around a little bit because we covered a lot of the details that were, uh, that were in, the, in the dissertation research because part of the dissertation research, of course, is some of the work that we've done already, which is to summarize what's going on in bullying prevention. So we, the research was done in 2012 and it still holds up today in all the areas that are important. So again, our goals was to, to figure out whether, uh, whether um, martial arts had an effect on bullying, both in preventing bullying and in keeping kids from getting from bullying other kids. So we're going to skip ahead because we've already we've already covered a lot of this major topic and really quickly to talk about what this procedure was during the bullying prevention uh, project was we measured bullying behaviors in three different areas so that we got a really good sample 
of what was happening in bullying. And this is called an ex a quasi experimental design because we didn't have time to wait three or four or five years to test kids, you know, start a group of kids and then wait like five years to see what happened. We already had these kids that had, we, we tested, we measured what kind of bullying was going on with kids that just started martial arts. Those were the beginners. And then we measured what was going on with the kids in the middle, the uh, what we'd call yellow through red belts, the intermediate students. And then we measure what was happening with the black belts. They've been with our, uh, in martial arts, not in, in our martial arts school, but in all kinds of martial arts schools all across the country. And, uh, and, and they had been with us about three to five years, sometimes six, seven, eight years. So that they had been at least a first degree black belt or higher. And the great part was this was in 17 different states at 22 different schools. Uh, we also did recruitment at large tournaments, uh, big national tournaments. So it was spread even further than that. 22 separate schools plus a wide variety of just individual samples across uh, across the nation. So it was uh, generally suburban middle class, so kind of middle of the uh, of demographics, which is where we see most bullying. Uh, we also see it at very high, uh, high socioeconomic status, and we see it at low socioeconomic status. It doesn't seem to be more prevalent at low socioeconomic status. And we've gone over that data before, but we kind of, this is, this is the group that we got. So it was a very large sample of kids, which is what's very important for data collection. If you have a very small sample, which most research in martial arts and most research in bullying are very, very small sample sizes. When you have small sample sizes to digress a little bit on statistics, then the data isn't as relevant. It's not as statistically significant. So you can do your own research on that if you wanna spend a little more time on that. But we got quite a few samples and we used the program, uh, the Oveus Bullying Questionnaire, which asked quite a few questions on whether to the kids, so they had to be at least in third grade, so this was third grade or higher, whether they had been bullied, how they were bullied, whether they bullied other kids. So if the parents, this wasn't the parents telling us stuff, this was the kids telling us. And it asked questions in a lot of different ways. It's been revised a lot of different times to get really, really good data. So we know whether or not, well, we, 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 our ideas are whether that it gives us a really good rep representation of whether they're being bullied. It also is validated by uh, other observational studies. And sometimes people do criticize this uh, in other areas. Uh, it doesn't give a lot of questions about cyberbullying. Um, the revised version that we did give them does include cyberbullying. So that does get included in what we were testing at that time, even though it was a few years ago when we did this. And we also asked parents questions. So we asked them 18 additional questions that we came up with about uh, their feelings about martial arts and whether their kids have been bullied. This is really important for our information later. And we're going to be summarizing this quite a bit for our time that we have available today. Um, we want to skip ahead a little bit with what the analysis was. You guys probably don't care a lot about the data, but the martial arts program that we did study specifically. So one thing that's kind of important is was a little bit restricted to a Ameri an American Taekwondo Association Karate for Kids program. So this program was specifically designed for kids and it had a lot of life skills built into it. So one thing to remember is if you're a parent looking for something to uh, help your kids, it is a you want to look for a program that does have a life skill curriculum built into it that's very serious that's not just a you know a couple signs on the wall that's part of the ongoing curriculum uh, our our programs and all the schools that we did work with does have do have some consistency in what they what they do and they have consistency in the type of martial arts now there's lots of other schools that are not part of the uh, the same association that do a fantastic job, but just be a little uh, under, uh, have a little bit of an understanding that the, the programs that, um, that we did test this under to get our research data do have a, a full and robust life skill curriculum along with the martial arts program. So the kids learn when they do martial arts, there's some honor and value in, in uh, uh, some character development along with it. Master Sanborn, I've been talking a lot. Do you have anything else to add there? 
No, sir, not at the moment. Okay, I'm I'm uh, putting you on the spot a little bit as we uh, as we go in. Please interject anytime you need. So let's look at the data that we got. I think this is really important to to go through, and some of it shows some. It, this is very interesting. I think parents very important for you to look at, and for really anybody, any educators or professionals that work with kids, this is a way to understand how this uh, how this the results that we got matter. So first of all. 227 kids returned the questionnaire. So we sent out way more than this, and we had a pretty good distribution of beginners, intermediates, and adults. The mean age was 11, and quite a few boys, quite a few girls. This is pretty typical in a martial arts program, about 35% uh, girls and 65% boys. You can see the median household income there as well. And again, this I gave you a quick summary of it. There's a formal research question. Do kids who take martial arts get bullied less than children who just got started? So we were measuring kids on entry. Now it's really important for the question that we're gonna talk about later. We weren't measuring kids who um, in the general population, we were measuring against kids who got started with martial arts. That's an important question, that, important for our data that we're gonna look at a little bit later. It was kids who got started, white belts, we call them white belts if you're not familiar with martial arts, versus kids who were black belts who, who had who'd been doing it for a while. And our guess was, is that they wouldn't get bullied as much, okay? And one thing important to remember is when we're talking about bullying, we're not talking about, um, you know, being bullied once in the last year. It's two to three times or more in the past couple of months, two to three times or more. So it's happening pretty regularly. That's the, that's the minimum that they would have answered the question, yes, I'm being bullied. If they've been bullied less, they wouldn't have answered the question. This is question four on this questionnaire. So, so this is a, you know, that they're being bullied. It's not just somebody looked at them funny. It's not just that it happened one time. It's being bullied regularly on a regular basis. If you remember our definition of bullying, it's intentional, intended to hurt, there's an imbalance of power and it's repeated. This is repeated bullying. So I wanna make sure that's emphasized even later, even though you guys have heard about that in our prior podcast. So here's our results, okay? Um, the If you look at it here, you can see that A lot of people haven't, a lot of the kids haven't been bullied. That's true. Quite a few, one to two times, but a good bit of them have been bullied two to three times a week. And what's important here is the difference between these. Um, and we'll illustrate this a little bit later as we look through the slides. This doesn't show um, the data quite as much as this um, little description here. So what this means is the beginners, the intermediate and the advanced, if you look at the difference between the beginners, beginners are being bullied two to three times a month or more, 27% of the, of the beginners are bullied two to three times uh, a month or more. Now, if you remember from our prior talks, the average was 14% for the general population. So this was an important discovery that we made that kids who come to martial arts are being bullied twice as much as the general population. So for our martial artists that are listening or for parents that, are, uh, that their kids want to do martial arts, this is a pretty revealing thing that about twice as many kids are getting bullied as the general population. Now, let me give you a little bit of a spoiler when we ask parents the question of whether their kids are being bullied, they answered about, we'll have to look at the data for my memory here, about the same as the, the general population. So parents didn't think their kids were getting bullied this much. Parents were unaware that this was happening, but kids in their own reports were getting bullied about twice as much as the general population. Now, if you look at the advanced group, the black belts, they were getting bullied about 10% of the time. So 
this comparison was 64% less. Now, again, spoiler alert, we're going to go through this, but the best bullying prevention program that we know of, and that's the Olveus program and the best study in the best circumstances that they had where they, they implemented the program really well, that reduced bullying about 60%. So this program across the data that we gathered was better than the best school-based bullying prevention program. Putting your kids into martial arts was better than the best school-based bullying prevention program. It reduced bullying more than any other thing that we've been, that we've measured. Anything to add there, Master Sanborn? No, I just remember being surprised at how many parents had no idea. They're bringing their kids into martial arts and from doing a lot of martial arts and being here for so long, I felt like the parents were bringing the kids in because of bullying but the data shows that the parents didn't even know that the kids were being bullied. Yes, that's an important point. And it's an important point for our discussion. We would notice that because about 14% isn't a small number. So that means about one to two every 10 parents would say, my kid's getting bullied. We want some help with that. That's pretty big. I mean, that's, you know, not small. One, one out of two, one to two every 10 kids would, uh, or parents would say, we need some help for this particular problem at school. And for us, that would be a very significant thing. And we'd want to, we'd want to, uh, you know, help them a lot because we care. And that's a, that's a major issue that we'd want to want to help them with. And based on this data, it's probably more severe if the parents are noticing it. So it's a more severe case. It's a more severe situation, but about twice as many times, about two to one, when every time you hear one of those stories, there's another kid that's not telling their parents about it, that the parents are unaware that this is going on. That's food for thought as we think about it. And for all of us that are listening, uh, for parents that are listening, for educators that are listening, for uh, people that are in fields that work with kids like martial arts, like dance, like gymnastics, anybody that you're working with, kids, you're not, you're likely not going to hear about the bullying situation unless you do something more serious like one of these questionnaires where it's pretty anonymous. In this case, it was anonymous whether or not they were getting bullied. We coded the questionnaires, this is important information, so that we know which parent matched which kid, but the parent and the kid didn't know that. And we didn't know which kid was with which. So it was, it was blind in that way but we could, we could tie the surveys together. Um, all right, so this is what you see. This is the 27%, this is the 14%, and it helps you see that graphically. All right, so again, this is 64% less than beginning students, and we'll talk about the the data later. I think this data analysis, all these numbers probably aren't that interesting to everybody. We won't go through all the statistical significance level. Um, and there may be some alternate explanations. Uh, is the age of, uh, there were some, for any criticism that somebody might have, would it be the age or grade? I mean, the kids are getting older if they move up to black belt. Is that a better explanation? We found that based on our data, that wasn't very, that wasn't a significant explanation. We can look at the data and reanalyze the data as if that was our, uh, and we can, ask the, we can ask the data, is that a better explanation of our results? The answer is no. Um, is the parent education level a better explanation of our data? Are the parents that are smarter having their kids being, uh, are their kids getting bullied less? The answer is no. Is the household income level, are the richer families, getting bullied less? The answer is no. These numbers, we call them p-values and f-values. You don't need to know too much about them, but those numbers are showing that the answer is no. So these were not better explanations of our data. The best explanation of our data was that martial arts, doing martial arts till black belt was the best explanation of the reduction in bullying. And we're gonna go through this a few more minutes and we'll follow up next time. 
All right, so our summary is that formally we can accept the answer, the hypothesis that kids who participate in martial arts will not get bullied as much as kids who are beginners, who started martial arts. Now, we, we aren't answering the question of every kid. They have to be, it, it is true that maybe only certain kinds of kids start martial arts. We wouldn't be able to filter that out because we don't know, are there certain kinds of kids that don't start martial arts that maybe this wouldn't work for, but we can have a pretty good idea that this is effective for the kids that do start martial arts. Um, and all of our data and all of our pre-analysis or post-analysis would say that the effect of reduction in bullying is based likely on martial arts training. Now, this is really groundbreaking in a couple ways because most martial arts research in formal academic settings and a lot of bullying prevention research, this isn't completely true because there's a lot of really great bullying prevention research, is often just survey research or very simple research where uh, data is not interpreted in a pre and post. This is a roughly pre and post type of test. Uh, so this is groundbreaking in the sense that we can attribute an effect the reduction in bullying to a treatment doing martial arts. So we can, we can give a pretty good idea that doing martial arts will have this kind of effect and a dramatic effect, significant compared to all these other bullying prevention programs, even the best ones that are out there. So one answer we can give is parents, if you want your kids or educators or other people that work with kids, if you want the kids to be safer from bullying, dramatically safer, have them do martial arts long enough that they get their black belt. They need to do it for a significant amount of time. And of course, we believe there's other benefits in doing martial arts as well. Now, we would probably want to do other research. It would make sense to do other research where kids are getting other character building training and other types of things to see if those also are factors that would help kids reduce, uh, reduce bullying effects as well. Now, there's another piece, and this also summarizes it, Beginners are bullied 27% of the time compared to 16.9. I, I said 14% before. We'll have to update that in our, in our writing or write-up for this. It's 16.9%. I gave the other uh, wrong number there. 16.9%. So it's roughly about two to one. Um, so we're going to talk our next time we get together on research question number two. Do children who take martial arts bully less than kids? who just got started. So we're gonna cover that next time we get together and follow up with our research uh, synopsis as well in our podcast on uh, this is bullying prevention and bullying mistruths and what to do about it, number eight. We're gonna do that when we get together for number nine. All right, uh, Master Sanborn, anything to add to finish up? Uh, no, sir. All right, well, thank you very much, ma'am, for being here. I appreciate the time today and, and the work that you do with all the kids, and you're the big part of why they're not getting bullied and why they're having success in the rest of their lives as well. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir.